Hi everyone, it's Rue from the King's Roost, and today I'm going to talk about growing your own yeast. If you bake, you have undoubtedly been to the store and bought yeast in those tiny little packets of dried out granules. But if you're like me, why buy a commercially produced, refined product when you can just produce it at home yourself? Yeast is all around us in the environment. In fact, a lot of yeast strains live right on the very grains you're probably baking with now. So why buy it at the store? When you can grow your own, that's much more natural. It's less processed and less refined. It's really cheap to do. It's not that difficult. And some people have less sensitivity to bake goods using a natural yeast. Some people call what we're producing here a starter or a levain. And that is what I'm going to be showing you how to produce and to maintain in this video today. The container you choose is important. Here's my starter. I keep it in a WEC jar, which is a one quart glass jar so that you can see what's going on inside. One quart is the minimum size that you need. You need to give it room to expand and it needs to have a lid but not be airtight. Any rubber gasket that might be on the on the wet jar you want to remove or if you've got a screw on lid like a ball jar you want to not tighten it down too tight. If it's airtight, oxygen can't get in and CO2 can't get out and that's important. See these bubbles? That's the CO2. You're going to need some kind of container to keep your yeast starter in. I'm going to use this jar right here to start a sourdough culture from scratch. Now, if you have a friend who has a sourdough starter going, the easiest thing in the world to jumpstart your process is to just get one from, get a scoop from a friend. But if you don't have that, then we're going to need some water and some flour, and we're going to start one from scratch right now. For your initial mixture, you're going to need equal parts water and flour by weight. The easiest way to do it is to use two tablespoons of water to three tablespoons of flour, and that is almost exactly the same weight-wise. For water, you need to make sure that you use distilled or highly filtered water because almost all water contains chlorine and chloramines now, and those inhibit the growth of organisms and possibly could kill your yeast. For your wheat flour, you're going to need uh, any store-bought flour will do. You can do all-purpose flour, bread flour, whole wheat flour. Since I mill my own flour, I use whatever grains I have lying around. Sometimes I even mix them up. You can use rye, hard red, hard white, amaranth, einkorn, whatever there is. Uh, this is actually a hard white wheat. So I'm going to give you a shortcut. For your initial setup, instead of using your two tablespoons of water, and this is optional, I like to use two tablespoons of pineapple juice, unsweetened pineapple juice. That helps lower the pH and provide a little extra natural sugar for the yeast to get started on. You're going to end up with, I found that you're going to end up with a better result and a quicker active starter. So you're going to take three tablespoons of flour and whisk that together and mix it really well with two tablespoons of pineapple juice or water if you're not using pineapple juice. Whisk them until they're completely incorporated. And then uh, cover it loosely with your lid, just set it on top, don't screw it down, and set it aside on the kitchen counter at room temperature. And all that you're going to do between now and the next 24 hours is give it a quick stir two or three times. So we're going to repeat that process every 24 hours, adding three tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of water. Remember, don't use pineapple juice anymore, that was only for the first one. Every 24 hours until you start to see bubbling, which should take between three and five days. Give it a stir two or three times each day to give the yeast some oxygen. After a few days, you should start seeing the air pockets forming. And if you smell your yeast starter, you should smell sort of a sourdoughy, a little bit acidic, vinegary kind of smell to it that smells really good. Okay, so we've got bubbles now. It smells really good, a little bit sour, but it, it's a good smell. And so now it's time to talk about ongoing feeding and maintenance of your starter. If you bake about once a week, which is what most people do, you can keep your starter in the fridge and that will slow the growth down enough that you only need to feed it once a week. If you're going to bake a lot, then what you can do is just store your starter on the kitchen counter and feed it every day. Feeding, what that is. So what you're going to do is when it's time to feed it, if you just keep adding like we were doing during the initial stages, you're just going to end up with way too much starter. And because you now have an active culture, you're just going to end up with a lot of like really broken down flour. So that's why you do need to discard half. When I use my starter, I take out half, I use it in a recipe, and then I build it back up to that level using equal parts by weight of water and flour, and just pop it right back in the fridge for another week. 
here's a few tips. You can play with your starter, you'll get to know it really well. You can play with the texture and the consistency of it. But here's a couple things to keep in mind. If it's gone bad, you will know it. It'll smell terrible or you'll see some weird colored molds on it. If that happens, just toss it and start again. If you find that there's liquid on the top, that's perfectly normal and it's called hooch and bakers know about it. It's a very common thing. Just pour it off and the next time you feed it, you can use a little less water. If you're interested in developing different flavors, I can cover that in another video. For example, if you want to make a sourdough, suffice it to say, you can ferment it a little longer, keep the batter a little thicker, you'll start to get more of a sourdough flavor to your breads. Whether you like a more sour starter or a more mild one, I know that you will absolutely love the flavor of cooking with wild yeasts. Homemade bread is so amazing.